Thank you, Secretary Gonzalez, for your introduction. General Bangit, AFU Chief of Staff, and all the officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, both incumbent and retired. Bishop Tumulak and the other guests who are here today, thank you for your very beautiful uh, opening prayer. Secretary Mendoza and the other members of the cabinet who are here today in order to join me in paying testimony to, to the professionalism of the great Filipino soldier. Former chiefs of staff and major service commanders and their spouses, the spouses of all the officers and members of the armed forces who are here with us today. Our soldiers, civilian employees, Congressman Matt Defensor, and other officials who are present here today, Troop Commander, Rear Admiral Ange, Gipti Kaspahinga. Tika Ha! Mga pinuno, Tika Ha! I thank the Armed Forces of the Philippines for this testimonial review. But more than that, for the last nine years, when you gave me the best, the best of your efforts, the best of your skills, the best of your sacrifices, the best of your passion to serve the flag and the constitutional authority, thank you. The professional soldier is defined by Alfred Tennyson's poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade. And I quote, there's not to reason why, there's but to do and die. A professional soldier is not politicized. Instead, a professional soldier follows the chain of command in war and in peace to the point of offering his or her life. From the first chief of staff in my term to the present chief of staff, each has left his mark to make the organization stronger and more professional. I've seen in each chief of staff with his own style of leadership, a progressive advancement towards the transformation of the armed forces from a fractionalized organization whose members had varying degrees of politicization to a truly professional force whose loyalty is defined solely by duty to the people and the Constitution. To be able to achieve this, the various chiefs of staff embarked and progressed on the Philippine defense reform to strengthen the institution, to revise doctrine, to modernize equipment and weaponry, including modern uniforms. The beneficiaries of their work are the institution and our soldiers. At the very center of defense reform is the great Filipino soldier. I see the human being in even the fiercest of our soldiers. I have seen the soldier on the front line prepared to offer his or her life in war or sacrificing to uplift people in times of need even as he or she himself or herself also struggles to make ends meet. Especially, for instance, the 40-year-old soldier who cares for his family of five and deserves more dignity. I know of the lonely days and fortitude of our soldiers in the field, in the battlefield, who send home their pay to the families as a source of love and hope. Within the nine years of my presidency, therefore, we have increased the base pay of our soldier five times. An ordinary soldier now receives a pay that is about double what he used to get in 2009 and also has increases 
in hazard pay and subsistence allowance. And because of the salary standardization that we legislated last year, you, the great Filipino soldier, will get another round of increase starting July 1 this year. And because of the law that we enacted last year, you will continue to have annual increases in pay until 2012. We have also ensured that more and more soldiers' families are able to own a home. We've increased also the number of scholarships and livelihood trainees given to soldier beneficiaries, including widows and orphans. I ordered the inclusion of military hospitals in the hospital upgrading program of the Department of Health, and we have increased the compensation for those fallen and those injured in battle. Our great Filipino soldier has been a leader in the fight against terrorism boosting intelligence sharing with key allies while lifting up professionalism and training. As a result of this professionalism and training, we have narrowed the layer of the hardcore terrorists in the South and continued to confine and limit the communist insurgency. The number of insurgents today is half of what it was in 2001. In the Muslim South, while a permanent political settlement has yet to be achieved, the great Filipino soldier has brought peace on the ground through a combination of strict military hard power and the effective use of soft development tools, building roads, bridges, and ports in the local economy. You have reached within the affected communities to change the peace paradigm. We shifted the policy for dealing with insurgent combatants and their supporters from total war to community-based consultation and capability building. The ceasefire with the MILF has held on for some years now. To our soldiers, for your temperance on occasions where your patience was tested. Congratulations and thank you. The AFP has come a long way since January 2001, when I first became your Commander-in-Chief. But so has the Philippines itself gone a long way since 2001. Time has gratefully erased memories of that tumultuous moment less than 10 years ago when the nation teetered on political chaos and financial bankruptcy. For the turnaround after that, the great Filipino soldier is among the building blocks that delivered 37 consecutive quarters of growth, the creation of 9 million new jobs, including additional soldiers, the addition of 52 million to healthcare, and a stable fiscal situation, even as we could afford more investment in modernization. Speaking of modernization, we have delivered the most modern election last May. And because of you, we can also say that we delivered the most peaceful election. Maraming salamat doon. I hope this combination of modern automated elections and peace during elections will change the face of politics in this nation forever. Indeed, I fervently hope that the progress we have made will not stop, that what remains to be done will be picked up by the next generation of leadership, including measures that will improve the capability of the armed forces of the Philippines even more. 
And so today, I thank you for your, well, for your, for your farewell. It has been a great honor to have been your Commander-in-Chief, especially during this period of defense reform. As I fade away, as old soldiers do, and old Commanders-in-Chief do, soldiers of the Filipino people, I enjoin you, carry on. Be the soldiers of the Constitution that you have been all these nine years. Maraming, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat.